Orville and Wilbur Wright. After completing the first successful powered flight in 1903, they have secured a patent that prevents anyone else from making money out of planes. The Wright brothers' patent really was quite broadly interpreted. Uh, it really essentially tried to patent flying. Curtis can design planes and test them, but he's going to have to do it as an unpaid hobbyist. Undeterred, he forms an alliance with one of America's wealthiest inventors, Alexander Graham Bell. Bell began to champion the idea of flight. It was really a, a key passion of his. He would say, someday we're gonna be able to fly from uh, New York to Paris. In 1907, Bell uses the fortune he's made from the telephone to back Curtis's attempt to make the best plane in America. Curtis and his team design a plane that has three major innovations that could make it better than the Wrights. They experiment with a revolutionary new way of steering their plane. Curtis was responsible for one of the most important innovations in early aviation, that was the aileron. This small hinged section on the trailing edge of each wing allows the pilot to control the amount of lift on each side of the plane, making it easier to bank right or left. The Wright brothers had this brilliant system of actually twisting, warping the wings. It was really innovative, but not that practical on large scale. Curtis came up with a simple flap behind the wing and that could control the plane. It was much simpler, and ultimately that's the way planes fly today. Curtis also rejects the skids used by the Wrights and uses rubber wheels for takeoff and landing. And finally, he will power his plane with an engine that's smaller and more powerful than the Wrights, allowing greater lift and speed. Now Curtis wants to see if his ideas work. There was no way to test a plane. There were no computer models. The only way to test a plane was to get in it and fly it. In 1908, Curtis gets his chance. An award of $2,500 has been offered for the first group to publicly fly a plane over 5,000 feet. The Wrights turn the chance down, but Curtis accepts. On the 4th of July, his plane, the Junebug, is prepped for takeoff. Press were alerted, public came, uh, and there was a lot of anticipation for what he was going to do. Until now, all the Wright brothers' flights have been conducted in private, in front of a handful of people. This will be the first time the American public has ever seen a plane fly. People were still driving horses and carts, and to see an airplane was like us seeing a spaceship. No one could believe you're gonna go up in the air in that. Really? Wow, I want to see that. As the crowds gather, so does a massive storm. Ignore the sky. Curtis's team is desperate to postpone. Have faith, my friend. But Curtis is convinced he can do it and refuses to let his public down. Curtis's wife, Lena, watches. The June bug accelerates to 30 miles per hour and takes to the skies. One photographer is so confident Curtis will fail that he sets up his camera well before the finish line. Traveling 20 feet off the ground, Curtis battles to keep the June bug in the air. After 100 seconds aloft, he passes the 5,000 foot mark. He made sure that he flew past the guy with the camera and upset history as everybody thought it was going to turn out. This is the actual photo, lasting proof that Curtis is the first man in America to fly over 5,000 feet in public. <laughs> 